Welcome to PHCP Pro's Behind the Wall podcast. I'm Ellen Rohr, plumber's wife, industry icon, and COO of Zoom Drain Franchising Company. With this podcast, our intention is to have real, thought-provoking conversations with people from across the PHCP industry. Of course, we want to entertain and encourage. Mostly, we want to connect and allow our guests to be vulnerable, to explore insights gained and lessons learned. Let's go behind the wall. So I'm super excited to have this young person on the call today. Chloe Davis, who is the queen of everything at Express Plumbing. But let me stop here. Let me let you introduce yourself, Chloe. Yeah, well, I am Chloe Davis. I work over at Express Plumbing Heating and Air in Idaho, and I'm the chief marketing officer for the company. So it's kind of a little bit about me. (laughs) Yes, and I know it's super impolite to ask this question, and I'm going to ask it anyway. How old are you? I am 21. I'll be 22 in April. <laughs> yeah. And that is one of the reasons I like am prejudiced towards the youth. I love, love, love that our industry is attracting um, young people and that you're finding a way that you can, you know, make your mark in the industry and be successful. What, I mean, I can't imagine when you were little that you thought I'm going to be queen of the plumbing industry. What happened? Like, where did you get the, this direction? Well, definitely in high school was not my plan. I wanted to be a radiologist or a criminal profiler, specifically criminal profiler, just because of the psychological aspect. I love psychology, um, always have and always will. And my father founded the company in 2006. And when I was younger, the bus stop would stop at the shop and I would sit there from three to five o'clock until my mom got done and brought me home. Um, with growing the company, my dad worked extremely long hours. Sometimes I wouldn't even see him at night. So, you know, the little times I was able to sit at the shop were, you know, kind of little hanging out moments of super shy, was not ready for any of it. Um, a lot of people that I work with nowadays, uh, have known me since I was that age. So they get a poke at me just a little bit saying, I remember you, you were the one playing on your phone or, you know, complain about this. And so definitely as a teenager was not in my point of view. But after I graduated high school, my dad wanted me to work at Express as a second, as my second job. So I, I had worked at a clothing company during my senior year. And so he wanted me to work at Express while I kind of started college and was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. At the time, I still wanted to be a radiologist or a criminal profiler. I already had college <laughs> credit for those classes. I had grinded my way in high school with all the AP or CP courses. So I already had college credit ready to go. Um, but when I started the company, my position was kind of data entry slash marketing. And I mainly was just doing the social media accounts. And every now and then I would talk to you know an ad agency for PPC or something. But I, I didn't know what marketing was. I knew advertising, but I didn't know what marketing was at all. And I, I wanted to know. There was something about it that made me realize that it was such a more deeper concept. And then I started loving Express and loving how to run a business, specifically a service business. Now, that wasn't until I was about two years um, into college and um, working at Express full time. And I just started really loving it. And we started getting this amazing stride with the company um, in terms of branding and our advertising and what our website looked like and we'd go out and take pictures. And I just started falling in love with the people who worked for the company. Um, That still blows my mind to this day that we're able to have this amazing team of people work all towards the same goal. You know, something that my dad started from scratch from the bonus room in his house. And yet all these people show up every day, they follow the policies and procedures and they just love the company. So as I started to know the team more, and see that you can build a policy and procedure and these people would, you know, we'd follow it to a T. I just, I really started loving that. I too love the people. Like I, I we, you and I relate about that. Before you go any further, I think that mm-hmm. the success of Express is really amazing. So maybe you could just share like, what were the sales then and now? Because you've grown really fast and unusually yes. fast for this industry. So mm-hmm. um, share that. That's going to just, uh, I think, be of interest to our listener. Yeah, 
Definitely. Well, when my father started the company in 2006, he went for more or less the commercial client. So a lot of property managers, commercial and residential, um, and a lot of like the the bigger chains here um, in Idaho, um, some are national chains. So he really went for a lot of that consumer base. And when I came onto the company, I think we were around the $3 million mark. We hit $6 million last year and we're projected to hit $10 million this year. Um, but the biggest reason is our recent switch to the residential market. Now, in 2019, we were 60% commercial, 40% residential. And we really started honing in our marketing. And, and Ben and I have been the only ones in the marketing department, um, you know, really grinding it away through. And last year, during the pandemic, um, we made a couple of business decisions and we came out 80% residential and 20% commercial. Um, this year alone, I'm happy to report that we are in 128% growth in the residential market. And I just, I love the residential market. Um, it is, for me, that's a lot of the marketing I'm familiar with. So for Express to go from, you know, purely commercial, all these commercial clients, and then make this transition into residential, but not only make that transition, but explode in it has been an absolute dream. And, you know, Ben and I always sit back and we, you know, high five. And it's just fun because we're able to come up with these amazing concepts that we hope really do resonate with that, you know, that type of consumer. So um, I'm really excited to see. My goal right now is 20 million for the company. I, I just love it. And I love to watch um, as we grow people's jobs they don't have to wear as many hats so I think that's also better for them too I know when I first started I was wearing a lot of hats uh, which was a lot, really crazy for me but as I've grown with the company I've been able to just to solely focus on marketing or you know um, uh, service time the software as well too I've really honed in on on that program and I, I really love that program as well I know, and I want to I want to um, uh, tackle that too but I want to point out something else Ben is your dad Yes, he's my dad. You're at work. You call him Ben. Yes, I do. And uh, but at home, every do you now, call him dad. Oh, it's a it's a back and forth. So the management team we have here. So Brad, he is our general manager. Um, he also owns ten uh, percent of the company. He is like the office dad. <laughs> him and my dad have been together for ten years. Skyler, he has also been with the company for about ten years now. He is the project coordinator and educator here. Um, he is like my big brother. So while it is, and I'm an only child, so while it is only my dad, me and my mom working here, it's honestly so much more than, you know, just us three in terms of the family. You know, everybody, especially the upper management team, just loves Express so much. Uh, we have such a great relationship here. So I do call him Ben, uh, but I also call him a dad. It's a 50-50 split. At the end of the day, especially for my mom, I think I call her mom more than Jennifer or Jen. So, but for my dad, it's it's a half split, and everybody everybody knows he's my dad. That's how they introduce him. Which I used to not like that because I thought that there was a stigma behind it. But as I started making my strides in terms of the knowledge in the industry and saying yes to any opportunity, like any networking opportunity or any. Like going to HVAC school, yes. Um, you know, going into this program, yes. I started getting more confident and realizing I don't have to worry about that stigma. Yes, I'm the boss's daughter, but I have been showing how much more hardworking I've been, especially for only being my age. I'm currently working full time at Express. I am getting two bachelor's degrees, one in entrepreneurial management and the other in marketing. And I am also going to HVAC school right now because I would love to get my journeyman's license. And I have the opportunity to get, get the education at a local college and then also train when I can and get those hours in. <laughs> oh, and, uh, you know, I have a lot of energy. I get so much energy from you. It's so contagious. Okay, so let's go back. I want to go into your past a little bit. Were mm -hmm. there moments in your life, um, maybe your parents, maybe other people in your life, who got you on the right track or saw you for who you are? Were there some salient moments or some mentors in your past that really shaped who you are? Definitely have to be my parents. For me, they have been the most, they're, they're the definition of hardworking and just showing how much success you can get out of that. If you haven't yet, there is a Titan video out there called Shop Tours um, that really does encompass, you know, my dad's story. It, it came out last year. So it's very, you know, new story, but 
my dad did grow up in a lot of foster care homes. And when they decided to start the company, as the story is um, in the time video, you know, he, my mom just barely even graduated nursing school and got her first job as a nurse. And he's like, honey, I want to start my own company. Here I am, you know, a little six-year-old kid. You know, they just bought their first house. They, my, you know, mother just graduated. So him being able to take that leap off. And then I just remember him working tirelessly, but building this amazing company. Um, it just showed me how much more you can do on a day-to-day basis and build something so just not originally on your path, so to speak. You know, he didn't, he never gave up, um, especially my mom too. She has definitely been my mentor in terms of just being a strong woman in the workforce. Um, I know that's something being looked upon now. And that's also where that daughter, daughter stigma came into play. But she has just been this amazing person. She was the t- nurse for over 20 years, um, a registered nurse for over 20 years. And she's always been the kind of like to suck it up or, you know, get it done. You just work hard. So both of them have always had that attitude at the end of the day. So I have taken that. I and I think I'm a little bit more of my dad, but I've definitely taken the best of both worlds from both of them because they're just amazing people and they only want the best for me or for the company. Um, so that's why I just absolutely love everything they've done. So I look at them and I'm like, if they can do it, then I can do it. <laughs> that is so cool. And uh, now radiologist or psychologist or um uh criminal mm-hmm. profile mm-hmm. okay that's that is pretty specific both of them involve looking inside of people yes so uh, <laughs> what turned you on to those fields and how would you use that interest now because i think you know that your mm-hmm. interest in that subject is not going to go away so like how did that yeah. shape you what caused you to go in those directions mm-hmm. uh, and, and now how does how do you see see that impacting you today? Mm-hmm. Well, so I, I grew up around both industries, um, you know, the medical industry, as well as the service industry. So the idea of being a radiologist wasn't really anything new. And I absolutely loved chemistry. I took all of the crazy courses you could think, just because I loved the the math behind it and how it worked. Um, and I love math. So I love business, because it's all about numbers, right? It's all about KPIs. It's all about your profit and loss, your balance sheet. Um, so I think that's that's how that translated is just my love for chemistry and the way that it was laid out and then the way that was able to translate into a business. Um, and then in terms of a criminal profiler, that is the psychology aspect. I took a lot of college classes in high school uh, related to psychology. So it really introduced me and I got crash courses on um, developmental psychology, um, you name it. It was part of that course. And I loved it just because of how simple yet complex human nature is. So when I took my first marketing course in the university, oh, that was the moment I knew it. I loved marketing. I I absolutely, every aspect of marketing, uh, whether it's advertising or building a target market or building a consumer profile, I mean, that one crash course, it was literally like, it was only a 16 week course, but it covered marketing 101. So one week we're talking about websites, next PPC, next how to build a customer base. It was just so much all in one, but I was able to sit down and say, I've done that for two years, or I wanted to do that for two years. And that's the part that really helped me was every single course I took, I was like, oh, I could do this with Express. Because unfortunately, a lot of them are aren't really based to like service companies or how to brand a plumber, right? So I it took a lot of me kind of daydreaming a little bit in class and the only project I got, I did it based on express. So it was so awesome to be able to see that complex side of marketing that made it so simple at the end. So what are you, what are you getting your, your additional degrees in? Um, So entrepreneurial management. So the reason why I'm getting that one is just because it covers every single aspect of a business. So financials, accounting, um, a little bit of marketing, Um, it it just is able to give you a little crash course on business 101, business law, you name it, it's in there, but it's only little pieces of the pie. And then when I took my first marketing course because of entrepreneurial management, now, mind you, I'd already been the uh, chief marketing officer over at Express and I had been migrating more into that role because there was a natural ability. I was able to take pictures. I was able to, 
you know, have that as a little bit more of a natural instinct to me when it came to marketing. So that's why when I did take my first course as part of entrepreneurial management, I realized, wow, there's so much more to learn. They literally are like, well, so this is social media and here's how to post and that's its own career. And here's branding and that's its own career. And here's about placement positioning. That's its own career. And I was like, I'm doing all of those okay, maybe I should get a degree in just marketing. Because at the end of the day, even if I'm going to work 40 hours a week, and then going to school two hours a night, plus an eight hour Saturday, I'm doing something that I love. And then it makes sense to me, you know, I'm not having to relearn something or, you know, force myself to do something I don't like or want to immediately apply. Express was like your playground for practicing oh, yeah. these things and then going mm-hmm. back to school and going, oh yeah, I did that. Let me, let me turn my assignment in based on what <laughs> yeah. I've already done. I love that. Now you said early on in our conversation, you knew what advertising was and then there was marketing. This is kind of a, a, a you don't always get the same definitions from everyone, marketing versus advertising. How do you define them? Well, as my marketing 301 class would put it, (laughs) yeah, advertising is just a small piece of the pie in terms of marketing. Marketing is so much more than that. There's a lot of branches. So you have your advertising branch, you have your branding branch, you have your PR management branch. um, And then when you get into advertisement, you can be able to do STP, which is segment, target, and position. Once you, you segment a market, here's your demographic. Oh, here's also consumer behavior. So advertising is, it's, it's what you put out there for customers. So it's what they see on the PPC or um, your billboard. It's the front facing part of it. And it's the part that a lot of people assume is just marketing. But at the end of the day, there's a lot more people to marketing that you can bring to the table. And our favorite here at Express is branding. And that's the part that I've loved. And then my other favorite part is consumer behavior. Those are my, well, obviously consumer behavior because of yes. psychology. Yes. <laughs> so um, I have to interrupt with this question. I hear so much trash talk about, uh, about young people within the industry at large. Are you ever discounted because of your youth? Yeah, a lot of times. Luckily enough, about half the people I meet think I'm 35. <laughs> oh, perfect. Um, I, don't, I, I think it's just the way I present myself. No, um, you're not going to like later on when you're 35. <laughs> you're, you're not going to want to think you're older than that. Yeah, you yeah. Would, but... and you're beautiful. I don't know if you guys can see our Miss Beautiful, uh, Chloe, but you, you, you look young and vi- vivacious. So, okay. So yeah. sometimes they mistake you for being a little older, maybe because it's how you, you present yourself. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the times, especially when I wasn't confident in that area or starting out, um, they would immediately leap over me and go to bed. And I I had to start changing my vocabulary. And that was just part of me not being confident. Um, I would say Ben and I or, you know, Ben. So I made it sound like a lot of decisions came from him just because I knew if I said that they would immediately agree with it or they would call him or email him. So when I didn't, I realized that, you know, I need to be my own person and I need them to see that these decisions are coming from me. Even if it's a conversation, the owner and CEO and I had, it doesn't matter if he's my dad or if he's Ben, you know, I I need to start being my own person because the end goal is for me to run express. That is the end goal. That's my end goal. And I would absolutely be hundred percent honored. And I would want to make my parents so proud every day. Right. But I I needed to start being my own person. So I changed that vocabulary. You know, this is my way or the highway is is kind of the attitude I took, but I still want to be respectful and I still wanted to answer their questions. So in my, in the back of my head, I'm like, it's my way or the highway. But when I presented it, I'm like, well, no, this is my decision. Here's why. And then as I started getting um, my education from my school behind me, in terms of marketing, and this is mainly for the marketing um, industry, when I would bring in people from TV or radio or um, an agency to manage PPC, that's where a lot of those interactions were coming. I was able to actually start adding and laying down those vocabulary words. And they started realizing, oh, she might actually know what she's talking about, you know, so (laughs) she might understand. So that's where I had to really change that. And nowadays, um, specifically, if there is, even if it's a decision like straight from Ben, I say it's me. Because there is, especially with a bigger organization, there is a, a flow um, that you have to be able to follow in order for the company to run efficiently. So 
I want to make sure that I'm upholding my part of that flow at the end of the day. So impressive. So um, how do you find some balance between other areas of your life? I take it you work a lot. You know, people are going to sacrifice their health and their relationships sometimes when they work too much. How do you, mm -hmm. how do you find a way to, to have, you know, healthy relationships and, and stay healthy yourself? I think the number, the number one thing is my parents have always encouraged myself and everyone who works at Express to just take care of themselves um, at the end of the day and their loved ones too. Um, that's kind of a big thing. You know, if, if there is something going on in the personal life, like it's okay. That's number one at the end of the day. So I think they've always been able to kind of influence that. Even though I, I don't, I hate missing work. I, I absolutely hate it. Um, the only time I'm comfortable not being in the office when it's a work day is if I'm with my dad. I'm like, okay, he knows he he's approving this in some way. You know, if we're out doing a photo shoot or something and I'm I'm with him, um, just because I always do want to make sure he he sees me working really hard and and proving that while I am here, you know, I'm I'm doing everything that I can. And I'm pretty sure even if he wasn't around, he would know. <laughs> um, I think one time I had gotten sick really bad like I woke up with it I I didn't want to bring it to the office and to get everybody sick so I need to be responsible in that area and my dad called me he's like it's okay and I, I was literally in, in the uh, urgent care I just started crying because I couldn't come in and I know that sounds a little weird but I absolutely love it here and um in terms of my personal life I think my fiance and I we've he understands and he loves my dad and my dad loves him and we always find like the smallest things to have fun with or, you know, the weekends. And sometimes I'm a little bit of a, a nugget because I want to do my homework, but I do make sure I at least have one day to myself on the weekend, whether that's Saturday or Sunday. So if we're doing something on Sunday, I will get all my homework done because it's not just work that I have. You know, I also have my schooling that I do. And sometimes those projects take me two hours a night to do on the weekdays and then one whole eight hour day. So I do work an additional 20 plus hours outside of Express for my degree. And gosh, it's still going to take, I'm going part-time. I don't want to go full-time because that's even more work. Um, and I always feel bad. I feel like that reflects my work ethic. Like, ah, I should be taking like the full X amount of credits, but I'm only going oh, part-time. sister, <laughs> believe me, you're doing a lot. Now, yeah. <laughs> given that, like, what's the biggest dream that you've got? Like, as you look out and with no limits, how big is how big is your vision? Currently 20 million for Express, but I would absolutely love to see it more than that. And to be able to also do more business adventures with my dad and my parents, you know, be able to start up something maybe on my own from scratch. Cause I do feel like that's a rite of passage just to be able to say, you know, whether it's a coffee shop or something like, hey, I want to start this from scratch and learn this business model and develop these type of policies and procedures and um, be able to have something of my own, but I have loved Express and I've loved how much my dad has worked for it and how much everybody here works for it. So I would love to see the company at 20 million and looking at the way we're growing it, I'm going to have to get a new goal here soon. <laughs> but, um, you know, maybe even taking it to different states or something. I don't know, but it's, it's something that I've learned to not fully plan out. I know that people say like plan out your life, but I only graduated high school five years ago and I already have done so much more than what I had thought of. If I were to talk to Chloe a year ago, I would be absolutely astonished and jealous at how much more I already know. So any opportunity that comes in the door, I say yes. And I learn and I jump into it. So I can't wait to see what I look like from a year from now and what that goal is. I just want to point out, I talked to so many people who tell me how hard things are. And there, I'm going to cry. There is none of that with you. None of that with you. <laughs> I'm mean, like, why not make it easy? And this is why I'm, I'm prejudiced toward young people. Why tell them it's hard? They don't know. It might not. <laughs> yeah. It <laughs> doesn't have to be hard. Hard is, is not this. You know, this is fun and exciting. And you so embrace that. I just love you. Um, what, is a, what is a mistake you've made? Where did you step in it and just think, oh, and maybe tell us how that turned out. Yeah, I've definitely been thinking about this question a lot. And it's funny because you just said that part of it. Um, I I think mistakes, I don't, I really haven't made one where I'm like, oh, I wish I hadn't have done that. 
everything that I've done, um, and don't worry, I'll still answer the question with a mistake, but I don't, I don't want to sound like, like, oh, I've never, I've never made a mistake, but everything that I've done, whether or not it turned out right the way I wanted it to or not, I have been grateful for it and learned from it. And, you know, I've also been able to, to watch my dad and learn from him. And I'm just trying to soak that up as much as possible. <laughs> Anytime he does this or he talks about this or same thing for my mom. Anytime they make a decision, I take a step back. I'm like, okay, why? What else are they seeing that I don't see? You know, is this something that was experience-based or more instinctual? So I just try to, to develop that part. Um, so anytime I do something and it, you know, it is a mistake. I really don't look at it like that. I'm like always pretty happy. I think the biggest mistake that I have made is I did lie to my parents pretty big one time. Um, I know. And I, I mean, we have an amazing relationship. So nowadays it's like, you know, a little bit of a joke, but I was lying where I was going to after school and I was still in high school at the time. I don't know why, but it was something that I'm happy that ended up happening because I feel like it made us gain so much more trust, even though I was lying because I realized, Hey, this wasn't good. You know, this wasn't something that I should have been doing. I should have been honest. I'm glad that my fears weren't as big as I assumed they were going to be, you know, the way that they would react to this or when they found out. Um, and the way that now it's more or less just like, you know, a little stepping stone. It, it was more or less like it was more lighthearted than I would have assumed it was. So I think that was pretty much the only mistake I had made. And I, I really did, you know, regret it. But nowadays I'm happy that it happened just because the amazing relationship I have with my parents that after the end of the day, but maybe, maybe in like 10 years, I, I'll make another mistake. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. I know, I know your, your dad. I haven't, I ha I don't know your mom. I mean, I know your dad a little bit in our conversation. Mm -hmm. I don't know your mom yet, but uh, someone told me once when you plant corn, you get corn and your parents are amazing. I know that because of you. <laughs> you have energy and, and enthusiasm. And so do I, mm -hmm. I know that brings a lot to any situation. What else mm -hmm. do you have? Like, we know we can count on Chloe for this. I think my ability to learn and apply. Recently, I've, I've been able to kind of reflect on that's one of my biggest strengths. Um, I know when people kind of ask you, it's always kind of hard and people kind of give softball or not, not softball, but, um, you know, kind of answers that are more or less not hard traits, but more soft traits. And so lately I have been realizing that I'm able to learn something and then apply it and then teach myself how to do it. Um, I do find a lot that people do come to me for answers. And the way I, like, I don't have the answer, but the way I'm able to find it is I know my resources. And I'm able to say, this program works this way. So a program I've never used before has to work in a similar way. There has to be users. The users have to have a user-based permission. There has to be some type of knowledge base or support out there. So I think that's one of my biggest traits. And, and I think that's the reason why I'm, um, our dispatch software service Titan has been such an amazing tool for the company. Um, I am also AKA the service Titan expert at express. <laughs> and that has been, you know, a tool in our company that we have been using so much. And I love every time there's like a beta or something out, I'm like, can we get our hands on that? Like, <laughs> can I try that? Cause I would love to, to learn and help you, but I would definitely have to say it's because I'm able to learn and apply. I love day. that answer. Now, someone who is as capable as you might also be tempted to do things herself. Um, how do you yes. feel about letting other people play? <laughs> that was the biggest weakness I had. A huge, huge weakness. Um, that was something I, I have, I'm still working on, but I have been working on specifically in my first two years at Express. And it just got to the point where I, I, my mother, <laughs> my, my wonderful mother was able to take a step back and kind of show me why I shouldn't do that. You know, how much more stronger I am when other people know, it. and they're not going to do it the way you'd want them to, but a, is it getting the result you want? Yes. Then you're good. So that was something that, especially the company too, has been, you know, focusing on policy procedures. And I, I did love to take the driver's seat. I absolutely mm -hmm. loved it. And that's why the marketing department, it was really fun because, and it still is, but because um, I was able to take a design or something and, you know, do it myself. And then either if, if I didn't have like access to the backend, I could ship over like the PNG file and say, hey, this is what I want it to look like. So that's why I did like marketing a lot. 
But nowadays, I do ask who the action taker is. And um, I go to that department head and I share them what I have found and then I, I get their input and I make sure I'm not turning down their input. Um, Cause that's another thing I, I don't do consciously, but I do, you know, kind of seem to move over their, their input or, you know, their advice that they would give. So I do have to make sure that I, I take a step back and do see the value that they're adding. Um, Cause everybody has amazing ideas and everybody applies wonderful things. So I go to that head of the department and then I ask them to make the policy and procedure after I show them a little bit, like, here's what it looks like, you know, okay, make the policy and procedure. But if it's something that I should be specifically managing myself, I will make the policy and procedure myself because I'm, I am the action taker. And then I will train others on that. And then another big thing is I say, you're doing this every single day. This is your job. So just because I make something, let me know if you need to change it because I may make the policy and procedure, but you're the one doing it. So if this doesn't make sense, or if this is redundant, or if there's an easier way that you've already know of doing it, let me know. We'll update it together and we'll make the system more efficient. So that's another thing I like to say. <laughs> Excellent. I love that. Okay. So other than Service Titan, which we know and love, what saved you time that you know you didn't know was there? Now you know and you love it. Adobe. I have absolutely loved Adobe. Um, and that's with its Photoshop, it's Illustrator, Spark. So there's a bunch of apps in that kind of correlate with each other in Adobe. Uh, but in terms of my marketing adventures that I've been on, Adobe has been a huge help in that, specifically Adobe Spark, just because I'm able to make these really clear post images of a PNG file, a PDF, or a JPEG, and I'm able to post them. So it is and they have amazing templates on there too. I love all the templates. So when I started doing Facebook posts, that was the first place I turned to. And then I went to into Photoshop and then I went into Illustrator just to be able to get more granule details done that, you know, Spark post couldn't. But those have been, especially if I'm talking to somebody that hasn't been doing marketing themselves or wants to do it, I say Adobe post, Spark post is where you should turn to for this. It has definitely saved my bacon. <laughs> oh, that's very practical. I love that. Okay, now because you're um, you have this little spark in you. Speaking of sparks, that identifies with the criminal mind. What shows on Netflix like completely have your attention? Obviously, any crime-oriented TV show, but the one I am watching right now. Oh goodness. A lot of times I don't have time to watch TV. <laughs> well, I was wondering if you were going to answer that. Like, when are you going to fit that in? But come on, it's the golden age yeah. of television. Give me, it give is. us a good recommendation. Well, I mean, all my recommendations are ones that everybody's watching. <laughs> have you seen Mindhunter? No. Okay, there you go. So that won't be one I'll probably have to watch. I have not seen that one yet. It's the beginning of the moment in the FBI's development where they discover oh. serial killer profiling. Oh yeah. That's not, that sounds okay. amazing. <laughs> it's so good. Okay. So that's a good one. I thought you were going to say it. That's why I thought, Oh, no, no. Loves mine any, any zombie movies or TV shows too. I, I love those too. I just love the, the idea that if something were to happen, you know, what would society look like? Cause once again, that's more of less like the psychological aspect, how will humans behave? How will we react to this? Is this, uh, especially with the current pandemic, that's why I love um, I loved what what we were able to do with the current pandemic um, while we were in it, uh, and we're still in it today, but while we were able to do that, being able to see what our reactions were, and then I kept thinking back, like, okay, so if this does go to the next stage, or, you know, if this does continue to increase um, in terms of, you know, a much more deeper pandemic, you know, how are we going to react? And I think everybody was really surprised about the toilet paper, um, but Supernatural <laughs> predicted it. I think that was my favorite thing with Supernatural. Um, they had kind of like a, they had a pandemic in, in the show itself. And uh, one of the characters told the main character when he goes back to buy all the toilet paper. And I, I thought that was the funniest thing. I was like, I can't believe that that was, you know, we would have never thought that. I would have never thought that. So that's why I also do love watching those type of TV shows when it's, you know, something does happen like the zombie apocalypse because I'm able to I love see. that. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I mean, I'm a really positive person, but I love a dystopian theme 
because of what you're saying, like what decisions would you make if like mm-hmm. all the things you knew to be true just got wiped out? The decisions we would make. I can I love mm-hmm. that. Oh, that's exciting. So one other this sound this question's gonna sound a little trite and I don't want it to. Um, but you have a platform right here to talk to people who may be new in the industry, young in the industry. Mm-hmm. Is there advice that you would give to other because everyone talks about like the demise of like, we can't find good people. And, and that has not been my experience. I see mm-hmm. good, wonderful people everywhere, but sometimes they get discounted. What kind of encouragement would you give to someone who's looking at this as a career? Uh, I would definitely say that the biggest thing that I've learned is we have an amazing community and we, for the service industry, we help each other so much. And that's been one of our more you know, encouraging factors and are more or less like the light at the end of the tunnels. We're able to go network with other contractors and ask them, you know, what have you been doing right? What have you been doing wrong? Um, go to trade shows and, you know, be some virtual ones as well too, but, you know, do these outreaches because somebody is doing something right. And if you can grab that and apply it, then, you know, you have another tool in your arsenal. You have another step towards your goal. And I remember when I first started, at Express, I knew nothing and I wasn't confident in anything. But just saying yes to every opportunity when it was learning something new, even if it didn't have a lot to pertain to my current position, it gave me more confidence, which boosted my position. Um, you know, so that's why I did say yes to learning, you know, certain parts. Like if they're like, hey, you guys want to watch a drain cleaning? I'm like, yes. <laughs> I'm like out, out there and I'm like, oh, I'll just pretend I'm like taking pictures. Well, I would be taking pictures, but you know, I'd be asking questions and you know, just really excited about it. Cause when I was able to come back and do the marketing or help make some business decisions, um, I had a little bit more of that experience behind me instead of just kind of coming up with something on the bigger picture, but not knowing what the details were. So network. I love it. And you, one of the things you want to do is become an HVAC trained tech. Yes, I would. Uh, that's, that's a, a big goal of mine. And I have loved the opportunity to be able to do that. And so I have been going to school for that and we're able to do a lot of training with it as well, too. It's I am a hands on learner, (laughs) Um, so I'm happy they have a lot of those virtual learning pieces as well as our training facility out there. So I I am really excited about that. I know that'll be a little bit longer part of my journey, but it's just because, you know, I'm working full time in marketing and, and getting other degrees. But I'm happy that that's something I have on my journey. And I feel like it would add a little bit more, you know, respect at the end of the day too, just because I am so young. Uh, I think that's another reason why I'm getting, I'm trying to get so many degrees. I'm like, I know I'm young, but I have two bachelor's degree and, and this and this. <laughs> I want, I want to introduce you to Christina Crinity. You guys have so much in common. She's going back to school now, wants to be a lawyer. And she said, we just need a lawyer on our team. We spend a lot of money with lawyers. We don't always know, you know, Mm -hmm. what we're looking at. And like, I'm like, yes, please. So here, you know, she's a young mother and she's also the daughter of uh, Jim Crinity, the owner and uh, my partner. So she's an integral part and has big, big dreams, much like you. Mm -hmm. I think you two would love each other. So I'm going to make sure we make some introductions because I love you both so much. And uh, I know you're going to, you're going to benefit from that. Hey, um, let, there's my final question. What does happiness okay. mean? Let's talk about happiness. I think happiness for me, I feel like this is like an ethics, ethical question as well too. I'm taking ethics right now. So <laughs> I feel like there's a deeper dive. I love it. I loved ethics. Yes. Okay, good, good. Yeah. Um, definitely for me, it's just, I'm always happy. So I really, <laughs> sometimes it's hard for me to define it, but definitely when I'm able to make myself proud, number one, and other people proud, like I accomplished one thing today. And even if it only affected one person, it made their life better. So it's more or less, my happiness is more or less being able to improve other other people's lives and being able to make sure that, you know, they're more efficient or more effective at a day-to-day basis. And then definitely my dogs. I mean, my dogs are just pure happiness. I have never seen them upset at any point in time. Uh, So I don't know how their souls are just pure happy, but they they outbeat me. <laughs> I think I told you we just moved to Utah and mm-hmm. uh, I have two dogs and one of them's old and very pleasant and even keeled and oh well here we are a new location are you guys here I'm fine <laughs> and the other one is very stressed oh, and, yeah okay Socks is okay if he's around his dad hot rod but mm-hmm. uh, 
he he is a little upset at the change of venue. So, you know, they do like a little routine. So I hope yeah. you don't test your dog that way. But I do know socks will be okay in a new home, but it has been a little zen wobbling for my poor little my poor uh-huh. little quadruped. <laughs> you are so much fun. We knew right away that we loved each other. I'm so glad that yeah. we got a chance <laughs> to spend more time together today going behind yeah. the wall. Thank you so much, Chloe. Now, um, if someone wanted to get a hold of you, uh, what's the best thing to do? Uh, email me at chloe.expressplumbing at gmail.com. That has been my main source of communication that I've loved. (laughs) Okay, excellent. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you, and I'm so happy we got this chance to talk together. So that's the end of this segment of Behind the Wall. Thanks, THCP pros. Goodbye. Bye.